Hi, boys and girls. It's Mrs. McCorder. I'm here to share the story Night Cat by Margaret Beams, illustrated by Sue Hitchcock. And this is going to be a book about nocturnal animals, animals that are awake at night. The garden was full of light and shadows, lamplight and moonlight, full of things that danced and fluttered, leaves and the moths and trees. It was exciting. In the garden, Oliver said, I don't want to go to bed. I want to stay out all night. Now, looking at that illustration, who do you think Oliver is? Mrs. Bundy opened the back door. Oliver, she called. Here, kitty. Oliver crunched low under the bushes. He kept very still. Oh, stay out then, you naughty cat, grumbled Mrs. Bundy. She shut the door, but the light from the window still shined in the garden. Fat, furry moths beat against the glass, trying to get to the light. Oliver leapt at them, raking them down with his claws. Crunch, crunch. He gobbled them up. Mm. Sometimes he bumped against the window. Mrs. Bundy heard him and came to the door again. Oliver, I know you're there. Come along. It's bedtime, she called. But Oliver was gone, hiding behind the rain barrel. Oh, dear, said Mrs. Bundy. Then you'll just have to stay out all night. I'm going to bed. She shut the door and turned out the lights. Now the garden was dark. Just the moon shined down on Oliver in the garden. Now he could hunt and chase things all night long. He followed a silver trail along the path. It led him to a, gar a golden brown snail. He patted the snail with his paw, but the snail just pulled its horns and waited for Oliver to go away. How can you chase something that won't run away, he thought. Oh, there he is chasing that silver trail. A porcupine stumbled and bumped across the lawn. That's more like it, thought Oliver. He skittered after it, run it ready to pounce. But the porcupine rolled itself into a ball and waited for Oliver to go away. Yow, said Oliver. It's prickly. Oliver sat very still, watching. A little gray mouse crept out from under the garage. It ran along the garden path. Oliver's tail twitched. His whiskers quivered. His back legs wiggled, ready to pounce. When down from the trees swooped, <gasps> something huge! Yow! Oliver scooted to a safety under the bushes. <gasps> what was that? The owl missed its prey and flew away silently over the rooftops. The little mouse vanished down its hole under the garage. After a while, Oliver came out. It wasn't really, or I wasn't really scared, he said, giving himself a quick wash. The wind rustled through the garden making hushed, rushing noises. Wild clouds turned the moonlight on and off. The wind ruffled Oliver's fur. It made him feel like racing and chasing, like a wild thing. He dashed across the lawn, straight up the trunk of the big old walnut tree. And there, nose to nose with him, was... <gasps> a bright-eyed furry opossum. Sitting in the fork of two branches, it was bigger than Oliver. Oliver backed down slowly, then faster and faster and faster until he hit the ground running. Oliver wandered around the garden. He wondered what to do. The moths were gone, snails were boring, porcupines were prickly, mice were too quick, and opossums too scary. Oof. Plop! 
a big fat raindrop landed on his nose. Pit, pat, splitter, splat, more rain fell. Oliver sat on the doorstep to keep dry. He thought of his blank or his basket in the warm kitchen, his cushion and his saucer of milk. He was tired. The garden was dark and wet and lonely. Oop. I want to come in, he yelled. Meow, let me in. Mrs. Bundy opened the door. So there you are she said. I suppose you want to come in now. But she wasn't really mad, so Oliver rubbed his head against her legs and walked inside. He drank his milk and curled up in his basket. I wasn't really scared, he thought, but she'd be lonely without me. The end. I hope you enjoyed Nightcap and saw lots of animals that are nocturnal, meaning they're awake at night. I'll see you soon.